Uh, Commissioner Bukacek, are you on? I can hear now. Thank you. All right. Very good. Good morning, everybody. Got a quiet crew this morning in the Bollinger Room. Uh, today's date is April 25th, uh, 2023. The time is now 9.33 a.m. I will call this meeting to order. This is the business meeting for the Montana Public Service Commission being Bollinger Conference Room here at the Public Service Commission. Uh, would my colleagues join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> All right, thank you, colleagues. Um, I would note for the record that present in the Bollinger Room this morning are Commissioner Pinochi, myself, Vice President Fielder, and participating online is Commissioner Bukacek. Uh, Commissioner O'Donnell is excused. All right. Uh, Montana Public Service Commission welcomes public comment on any matter that is on today's agenda or on any matter that's within the jurisdiction of the Montana Public Service Commission. Are there any public commenters in the room? Public commenters in the room? Seeing none. Do we have any public commenters online? Any public commenters online? No, sir. Okay. Seeing none, uh, we did have one person indicate that they uh, might provide public comment this morning. So um, if you let me know if they come on, we will certainly try to accommodate that. Okay. Changes to the agenda. Uh, we did have one change to the agenda this morning. This would be work session item number two. This will be the Holmberg Village Water Company, uh, the complaint. Uh, we are going to defer this matter. It will not be taken up this morning. Action items. Action item number one, approval of the commission minutes for the week of April 3rd, 2023. Is there motion, Vice President Fielder? Mr. President, I move uh, adoption of the commission minutes for the week of April 3rd, 2023. Seconded by Commissioner Pinocchi. Any discussion on the April 3rd, 2023 minutes, changes, modifications? Seeing none, all those in favor of the Vice President's motion to adopt the minutes for the week of April 3rd, 2023, as written, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. Seeing no opposition, motion carries unanimously. All right, let's move straight into our work session items then. Docket number one is 2023.02.018, City Service Valcon. Uh, this is the order to show cause 7882. Uh, we're here to receive an update uh, on the order to show cause that City Service Valcon responded to on March 29, 2023. Good morning. Good morning, President Brown and Commissioners. Uh, before you today is a draft notice of commission action concerning city service Falcon's show cause order and an accompanying staff memo. For a reminder, in February, the commission issued an order to show cause identifying four potential violations of the Natural Gas Pipeline Safety Act. In March, city service Falcon responded to the show to the order to show cause. Recently, on April 14th, CD Service Falcon filed a supplemental filing. At this point in time, Commission staff believes that City Service Falcon has taken proactive steps towards compliance and has come into compliance with two out of the four potential violations. Uh, City Service Falcon still needs to produce a written qualification program and replace its pressure valve. Though. In its response, City Service Valcon represented that it will be replacing the precious or the pressure relief valves by the end of July. For that reason, uh, staff recommends holding this docket in abeyance until July 31st, 2023, to allow City Service Valcon to complete its scheduled compliance activity. So, 
In total, staff recommends adopting the, the draft notice of commission action and allow staff to make any necessary non substantive changes. Thank you, Mr. Palco. Uh, Mr. Harwood, do you want to add anything? None, unless you have questions for me. All right. Thank you, Mr. Harwood. All right. Is there a motion? Mr. President. Vice President Fielder. I move that um, we hold the order to show cause 7882 in abeyance until July 31st, 2023. Okay. Is there a second? Commissioner Pinochi has seconded discussion. Just a question for Sam. All right, go ahead. Um, Mr. President, Sam, are, are is the company or the the party here, are they indicating um, genuine um, efforts to comply? Mr. President, Commissioner Fielder, yes, I feel that they are. They're doing a pretty good job of um staying in communication with us, working with us as we providing for us what we ask. And yes, I, the answer to your question is yes. Thank you. Um, I guess I have a follow-up, Mr. President. Follow-up. Um, Mr. Harworth, are there any, um, I guess, urgent concerns about the status of the works right now in terms of not being in compliance? safety concerns? No, Mr. President, Commissioner Fielder, no. I would say this time there are no real safe safety issues. We need them to address other than the pressure regulating valve. Um, but given that it's been 10 years since that it's been more than 10 years without this valve, I think we're in a good we're in a good place for right now. Thank you. That's all, Mr. President. Additional discussion? Seeing none, uh, take a vote on the vice president's motion to hold this uh, matter in abeyance until July th 31st, 2023. Uh, all those in favor of the vice president's motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. Seeing no opposition, motion carries unanimously. All right. Thank you, gents. Uh, again, uh, work session item number two has been deferred uh, to a later date. This was the Holmberg Village Water Company matter. So we'll move to work session item number three. Uh, this is a legislative update. Uh, we're here to discuss bills relevant to the PSC, Montana legislative bills relevant to the PSC mission, statutory authority, administrative process, and general agency concerns. Uh, to discuss uh, PSE budget request or presentation or to consider st staff analysis and recommendation and provide direction on PSE response to bills. Mr. Rosequist. Good morning, Mr. President, commissioners. Uh, today's work session, I'll go over several of the technical bills that the commission has been supporting or monitoring and address a couple of other bills that popped up uh, recently uh, and were requested that we put on the list. Uh, starting with the bills that the commission uh, requested through the ETIC process, House Bill 52, Revising Common Carrier Regulations, uh, sponsored by Representative Katie Zolnikoff. That, uh, uh, I'll note that um, I did distribute a memo uh, on April 20th uh, that provides the status of all these bills as of that date. And um, subsequent to that, several of the bills have had further action on them. So I'll, I'll also note the current status for you. Uh, so House Bill 52, as of April 20th, had been transmitted to the governor. It has now been signed by the governor. So HB 52 has been enacted. HB 492, revising uh, telecommunications regulation. Uh, sponsored by, by Representative Katie Zolnikoff. Uh, this is the bill that re, uh, repeals various portions of the Montana Telecommunications Act that the commission felt were obsolete and unnecessary. HB 492 uh, was tabled in the Senate Business, and Business Labor and Economic Affairs Committee. Uh, so that one died uh, over some concerns about the small uh, percentage of customers that are still receiving 
regulated telecommunication services. House Bill 729, providing for advanced conductor cost effectiveness criteria. Uh, HB 729, sponsored by Representative Stephen Galloway, authorizes the commission to establish cost effectiveness criteria for advanced conductor projects. Uh, that has been uh, sent to enrolling, so it's very close at this point. SB 32, revising pipeline safety regulation penalties uh, as of April 20th had been returned from enrolling. It has now been signed by the president of the Senate. Senate Bill 33, repealing Class C motor carrier regulations as of April 20th had been returned from enrolling. It has also been signed by the president. HJ6, an interim study of electric power reserves sponsored by Representative Katie Zolnikoff. As of April 20th, uh, that had been returned from enrolling. It has now been signed by the speaker and the president and filed with the Secretary of State's office. Uh, several other bills that the commission has been monitoring. House Bill 220, which creates the Select Committee on Energy Resource Planning and Acquisition, sponsored by Representative Joshua Kassmeyer. House Bill 220 passed third reading on April 19th, and currently it has been returned from enrolling. House Bill 284, which revises laws related to approval of electricity supply resources. This corrects the constitutional issue with the pre-approval statute. Uh, as of April 20th, HB 284 had been returned from enrolling. Uh, that bill currently has been signed by the Speaker and the President and transmitted to the Governor. House Bill 558, revising PSE deposition laws. Uh, that bill was uh, tabled in the Senate Energy and Telecommunications Committee. Uh, SB 255, revising electric vehicle charging stations sponsored by Senator Christopher Pope, failed on third reading in the House of Representatives. HJ, and now I'll talk about two bills that the uh, commission hasn't discussed before. They were requested to be added to our list. HJ-19 uh, is an interim study of pumped hydropower generation, sponsored by Representative Kenny Zolnikoff. It requests that the Legislative Council designate an interim committee or direct sufficient staff resources to examine the feasibility of pumped storage hydropower and identify regulations and other barriers to pump storage hydropower development. Uh, hold on, before you, before you go there, uh, Commissioner Bukacek, did you want to have the commission take action on this joint resolution? Commissioner Bukacek, are you still on? Yes, I was thinking maybe discussion. Yes. Did you did you want to make a motion to have the commission take any action on this joint resolution we just discussed? I make a motion that we discuss HJ19 and HJ40. Okay, well, we're on 19 right now. So do you do you have a motion? Do you want the commission to take a position on this bill? Or yes, just... I make uh, just discussion. Uh, well, okay, whether well, to, whether to mo monitor, whether to monitor or support. Okay. All right. Eventually, we'll get to a motion. But go ahead, Commissioner Bukajic. He's muted again. Mr. Bukacek, can you hear me? Mr. Bukacek? Mr. Bukacek? Okay. Well, uh, does anybody want to make a motion for, to have the commission monitor this? <laughs> Mr. Panochi? 
I'll make a motion to support it. You guys vote for it. Okay. Is there a second for that? I'll second that. Uh, so we have motion and second to have the commission support HJ 19. Discussion? Technology? Just a question, Mr. President. Sure. Um, is it Representative Katie Sullivan or Katie Zolnikov carrying the bill? I believe it's Katie Sullivan. Okay. Yes, it is. Katie Sullivan. I'm back. She's back. All right. Did you want to... Do you want to weigh in on this, Mr. Bukachev? Yes, I support the support the motion to support it. Okay. Do you have anything to offer? Nothing additional. I think it's just on its face a good idea. Okay. Additional discussion? Commissioner Pinochi? I got a call from uh, Gary Marbit, who's in real support of Pump Hydro. Um, he feels that it has a the ability to outperform batteries. Batteries are expensive. We're not clear on how long a battery can can last. We don't know the the life of a battery. Where pumped hydro uh, won't have those issues. When we have too much electricity um, and we can't give it away, this is a time we can pump it to a higher level, and the higher level is the battery. And then when we need power, we can turn a valve on and generate electricity. And uh, uh, Gary Marbit has asked uh, that I support this and encourage the commission to support it. Thank you, Mr. President. Additional discussion? Vice President Fielder. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Well, the concept sounds fine. I have not examined the legislation and I'm just not comfortable um, taking an agency position on a piece of legislation that we haven't actually reviewed. So I would be a no vote on the motion to support at this point. I'd, I'd support monitoring or getting more information, but I just can't support uh, weighing in as an agency on a piece of legislation that we haven't read or that I haven't read anyway. Additional discussion? Seeing none, all those it's in favor. It's a study bill. I was going to say oh. it's a study bill. Yeah, so go I, think ahead. It's easy, I think it's easy to weigh in. It's a, it's a study bill. And Additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Commissioner Pinochi's motion to have the Public Service Commission support HJ 19 uh, signify. Uh, Oh, why don't we do a roll, roll call vote on this? Vice President Fielder? No. Uh, Commissioner Pinochi? Yes. Commissioner Bukacek? Yes. And then I will be a yes on this as well. Uh, so the vote is three to one. Uh, the commission support HJ 19. Okay, uh, Mr. Wolf Rosequist, the next one. Uh, Mr. President, just briefly on that one, that uh, bill is scheduled for a hearing uh, before the House Energy Technology and Federal Relations Committee this afternoon. So uh, I anticipate the commission will just want me to go up and express its support. Affirmative. All right. Uh, the other bill, uh, in the memo, it's listed as LC 1339. It has now been uh, designated HJ40. It's an interim study of cryptocurrency energy impacts. Uh, the bill was requested by Senator Janet Ellis. It requests that the Legislative Council designate an interim committee for sufficient staff resources to analyze existing and potential electric demand created by cryptocurrency operations and impacts of that demand on electricity systems. The interim study would also examine potential requirements for cryptocurrency operations during peak demand periods to mitigate electric system impacts. Uh, that bill at this point has been referred to the House Energy, Technology, and Federal Relations uh, Committee, but has not yet been scheduled for a hearing. Is there a motion on this, Commissioner Bukacek? I make a motion to support this bill, this study bill. All right. Is there a second? All right, now we have motion and second discussion. Commissioner Bukacek. I had shared a New York Times article with you several weeks back that, that um, discussed the amount of electricity used by, by digital mining. And in that article, and we've known 
all of us have known that it uses a tremendous amount of electricity. Uh, but in that article, it talked about how during storm URI, the, the grid managers in Texas, uh, when they shut down Bitcoin, um, the way that they had an agreement with the grid manager, Bitcoin was able to charge hundreds of thousands of dollars. So uses a lot of electricity. And then when they have to shut down to save the grid, they, they charge money. I think it's something that should be looked into. All right, additional discussion? Vice President Fielding. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just again, I the concept sounds good. I don't disagree with what's being presented. I just I just can't vote for a piece of legislation that I haven't actually reviewed. So I'll be a no vote on this. All right. Additional discussion. One question, Mr. President. Does it does this piece of legislation even have a bill number yet? Uh, HJ forty. Thank you. And the sponsor is David Fern. So this is different than LC 1339 that's in our staff memo that says requested by Senator Janet Ellis? Uh, Mr. President, be. Commissioner Fielder, uh, it was requested as of the 20th. It was requested by Senator Janet Ellis. I can check and see if anything's it does currently say the primary sponsor is Dave Fern. And just to clarify, Will, this has not had a assigned committee yet it is assigned to the house energy technology and federal relations committee not scheduled for a hearing yet okay additional discussion uh commissioner Bonucci. a couple things to think about here is uh, we're looking at some serious energy rate increases so any legislation that could be looked at that could protect uh, the rate payer from higher costs, such as pumped hydro being more competitive than batteries, or is Bitcoin able to take advantage of cashing in when energy is at a high cost? I encourage everyone to uh, to take a serious look at so we can do some due diligence and looking out for the rate payer. And study bills, I think, are exactly set up for that. If uh, the study shows that there is no benefit, uh, then that will be the decision probably made after the study. But I think both of these warrant uh, a good look into. I think pumped hydro is going to be uh, a tremendous benefit and more competitive than put in expensive batteries uh, that we're not sure what the shelf life is or the manufacturing problems with batteries. Um, so uh, I think this is a good time for the Public Service Commission to support anything that could lower cost or support uh, energy efficiency. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Pernoche. Additional discussion? Thank All you, right. Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Pernoche. I also wanted to say that, you know, we know that it, it uh, could be a high risk to our grid. And we saw what happened back in December and how we were, I don't, you know, a short period away from the grid shutting down. So to, to have potential sources of, of tremendous use of electricity should be studied. All right, additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Commissioner Bukacek's motion to have the Public Service Commission support HJ40. Uh, well, we'll do a roll call vote on this one too. Vice President Fielder? No. Uh, Commissioner Pinochi? Yeah. Mr. Bukacek? Yes. All right, I'm a yes too. Uh, so motion carries three to one. Uh, we'll just keep an eye on when that might come for hearing for House Energy and give us an update on that. All right, additional legislative matters. Vice President Fielder. Yes, Mr. President and just commissioners and staff, um, we've been receiving this legislative report each morning and I noticed House Bill 190 on there a little bit ago, and I've been 
sort of following that, or at least I've reviewed that legislation. And I just wanted to put it on our radar that would impact. It looks like it's going to pass. It's it's pretty well through the process, almost completely through. Um, this is sponsored by Representative Bill Mercer, and it creates some requirements regarding strategic agency strategic plans and annual reports and sets some components, measures, deadlines, and, and then reporting requirements to the interim committee. So um, I've actually put put it in the hopper for the Blue Book uh, Policy Committee um, because we do have a, a policy identified for strategic planning. So we just would want to coordinate that with 190. So we plan, I plan on addressing it there through the Blue Book process. So we have some parameters that we can work through. Mr. Pinoji. Thank you, Mr. President. A couple of questions for Will. In the past, Will, there's been legislation that would stop the original House Bill 411, which would add a tax to the electric bill to give money to fish, wildlife, and parks. Did they have a bill this year to stop that, which you know could give a little relief to the rate payers on the energy bill? Or did no one bring that bill this session? Uh, Mr. President, uh, Commissioner Pinochi, that would be the aquatic invasive species uh, fee. That's correct. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what the answer to that is. Uh, I feel like I may have seen a draft uh, on that subject, but whether that draft made it to a bill, it, I don't believe it was one that we were following. Um, but I, I'd have to check the law site a little bit more to see if I could identify that bill and what happened to it if there was one. If it exists, I'd like to encourage that we support that, and I'd bring a motion. That, again, that's timely based on uh, the rate increase that's in front of us. Also, was there any bill that you know of that would lower the tax to Northwestern Energy that could be passed on to the rate payer? to see some relief that way. Uh, Mr. President, Commissioner Pinochet, I didn't follow all of the tax related bills. Um, I feel like there was a bill that would have affected the uh, property tax treatment of high efficiency, high efficiency, high efficiency conductors, um, but I'd have to do some more research on that one as well. One more question, Mr. President. If the pumped hydro was to happen and Northwestern was able to pump hydro to a higher level when the price of electricity is almost worthless and then the price of electricity goes up and they're able to sell it on the open market, and make a good profit, they would then benefit Northwest Energy and profit would be shared with the rate payer. Am I correct on that? Uh, Mr. President, Commissioner Pinochi, generally speaking, that is one option um, to the extent a utility uh, owns a pumped hydro system or uh, participates in a pumped hydro system. Um, yeah, generally the idea would be to pump water from the lower reservoir to the upper reservoir using the least expensive electricity and then to rely on that uh, reserve of uh, potential energy when you need the capacity, you need the energy, or when um, the alternatives are, are higher cost. So it works similar to a battery in that sense. Do you think it would be fair if I testified on the bill today that I could say this would be beneficial to Northwest Energy and the rate payer if I am correct that we could pump to a higher level when we can't really sell our electricity anymore or it's worthless? And then we then drain that as a battery where they can get a much higher cost. They would share with the rate payer and Northwest Energy would gain. Do you think that's fair for me to testify today in front of Energy on with that point of view? 
Well, uh, Mr. President, Commissioner Pinochi, um, the the benefits to the ratepayer of of pumped hydro are going to depend on what alternatives are available to do the same thing, right? So uh, that's what the resource planning process is about. You'd want to look at what it costs to develop a pumped hydro system that has those capabilities compared to the cost of developing other resources that have uh, the same or similar capabilities, whether that's a battery, whether that's a natural gas plant, um, whether it's a combination of other resources that could uh, together be operated in a way that that provides those same services. So uh, really the cost analysis needs to be done uh, of, of pumped hydro, hydro to other resources to know whether, uh, whether the benefits of how it can operate uh, worth it for the customer. And that's the purpose of the study bill, to weigh that out. Uh, my belief in others is that pumped hydro will be far cheaper than the investment in batteries. And uh, once we put pumped hydro in place, there is no shelf life. A battery is really a ticking time bomb. Everybody who has a cell phone knows it works great the first couple of years. After year three or four, the battery seems to be less and less and less. I believe we'll have the same problem with those batteries where pumped hydro, uh, that battery, I think, would last indefinitely. Once you get to a higher level, that holding pond is going to be a battery that doesn't have to be replaced. But that's the purpose of the study. Uh, but I'll visit some more before we testify. Um, but those are some of the thoughts I have. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Pinochet. Any additional legislative matters? All right, seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Rosequist. Uh, is Mr. Bovington online to make public comment? All right. Okay, uh, just one announcement uh, before we... Well, two announcements uh, for the public. Um, this is notice that uh, the commission will hold an out of cycle meeting at 9.30 a.m. Friday, April 28th uh, to discuss Northwest Energy's USB uh, tracker. So we will have an out of cycle uh, Business meeting, Friday the 28th, 9.30 a.m. And then our next regularly scheduled, scheduled commission business meeting is Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023 at the normal time of 9.30 a.m. With no further business to come before the commission, uh, the time is now 10.05 a.m. I will adjourn today's business meeting. Thank you. Great meeting.